All right, now we're going to talk about Reactive. Like Ref, Reactive is similar that it adds reactivity to your template, but there are some differences. In this application, we're going to create a list, and then we're going to print out the information inside our Reactive variable using a v4 loop. It's basically a for loop with some syntactic sugar done through view. And then we're going to import the Reactive uh, function from view, and then we're going to create the employee variable uh, using the reactive variable. And that's going to be part one. We're going to create all that, print it out as a list, and that will be part one. On part two, we're going to then create some employee data. And then we're going to use this employee data to change the reactive variable um, that we have. And it's a lot different. We're not just changing something from true or false or changing a string in a variable. We're going to be changing a lot of properties within that variable, which I will show you in just a moment. So let's get started. Uh, to creating this application. Let's create an unordered list. And then we're gonna create an LI and then I'm just gonna call this um, info. And we're gonna see in the browser, we print out info right here. What we're gonna do here in this list is we're gonna print out a list of information about this employee. So let's go ahead and create the reactive variable or import the reactive variable and to structure it out from view. And then we're gonna create some employee information. We're gonna say let employee equals, and it's a little bit different than ref. Just like ref, we put reactive and then we have some parentheses, but unlike ref, we can't just put anything inside here. It accepts one data type, which is an object. A reactive variable is pretty much an object, and that's how we, uh, that's how we work with a reactive variable. It's a proxy, but just think of it like an object. And it, within this object, we're gonna have properties like name, and for this case, we're going to call the name Sheila. That's our employee right here. And then we're going to say birth date. And we're going to give it a random birthday. Let's say 06 20 2001. And then we're going to give Sheila a salary. And her salary will be 62000 And the department is marketing. And the position for Sheila is a social media manager. So this is the employee information. If we just put this reactive variable within here, we're going to get this full object printed out. And that's not what we want, but let's just show you what we get. All right, so if you see right here, we get the whole entire object as a string and it prints out all the properties and the property values. We don't want that. That's not how you access a reactive object. You you access it by using the properties, right? So if I wanted the name, I could just put employee.name, just like if I was using a normal object in JavaScript. But the problem with this is we don't want to just write a bunch of LIs right here and then end up using that as a way to print out our list. So we're going to want to use something else to print out our list so it automatically does it for us. Because if in JavaScript or in Vue, if we get information from a database, we want it to be able to automatically print out the list for us instead of us having to manually always type stuff like this. And in order to do this, we're going to use a directive called v4. So let's go ahead and delete this li right here. And we're going to delete this information right here. And we're going to create our v4 directive. And what we're going to ask for is both in this parentheses right here, an item and the name. And I'll tell you what those things mean in a second. But we want the item and the name in employee. And so what this is saying is we want the item and the name and the employee. And we want these two to indicate something, right? So there's two things inside this reactive variable. We have the property names. And then we have the property values like Sheila, the birth date 0620 2001 or 62,000, right? We want to access these, access these things uh, separately, and we want to tell Vue explicitly which is which. So we're going to create a key, and in this key, we're going to say name. Name is our key. And so what this is saying is, hey, the name is our key, and the key is the name, the birth date, the salary. Just like if we were accessing an array, your key would be position 0, position 1, position 2. In an object, the key is the property names that you give, and that is the keys that we're accessing. And then the item right here will be the value of those properties. So right, if we're on property name, the value of property name is going to be Sheila. 
if we're on property birthday, the property value is going to be 06-20-2001, so on and so forth. And so that is what this V4 is basically doing. It's cycling through all these properties and getting their values. And now we can just put right here, item, see what we get. See, we get Sheila, her birth date, her salary, uh, what her department is and her position. But let's just say we also want to get the property name as well. Just like I said, we already have access to them. We can just put name right here and that gives us the property names as well. And you'll see what I did is I accessed the property name, added a colon just for, you know, so we can have a colon on the browser right here. And then we get the item. All right, and that's how we go ahead and print out the list. Now what we want to do is part two, which is we want to be able to create some employee data and use that data to then change what employee we're showing to the browser right here. Um, and there's a lot of things that go on with that. And I just noticed I spelled position wrong. <laughs> that's how you spell position. Oh, no, that's wrong too. Position, all right, we have position spelled right. So we're gonna create some employee data and then we're gonna change the employee data by using a method. So let's go ahead and create a variable called const all employees. And in here, we're gonna use an array of objects. And so each object is going to represent an employee. So we have two objects right here. The first one is going to be Sheila. So we went ahead and just copy and pasted that one. And then we're gonna copy and paste it again. And then we're just gonna change the information within this object to fit somebody else, another employee. We're gonna call this employee Bob. All right, so we have our employee data. So just imagine that we went to a database and we asked for some information and then we got this information back from this database. And now we wanna use this information to change what is being printed out to, to the browser right here. We're gonna create a function called change employee. So at first you might think, okay, we need to actually move this because we need access to this data first. And what we're going to do, instead of putting this object in here, see, we already have an object. These are two objects. And we use an object to create Sheila. We can just go ahead and call all employees and access the first position. And we're just getting Sheila's object right here and inputting it here. And what we want to do is change all these properties to Bob. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a button because we need to go ahead and ch uh, chain or bind a event handler to something on here. So we can go ahead and make that change. Change employee will be the text inside this button. And then we're going to put a click handler that is going to be tagged or binded to change employee right here. All right, so let's just make sure we got it binded correctly. With the button and then we can see in our console that we have the test button string being printed out so it's binded correctly now someone who's new to view might think okay this is the object that's in here all we have to do is change the object that's an employee so they might think okay let's get employee this is not react this is not a ref so we don't use dot value we only use properties and you're going to see why in a second i'm going to go ahead and change this to all employees position one. And then we're gonna go ahead and print this out, employee. So let's see what happens when we click this button. All right, we see right here that our object does change, but at the same time, we do not have anything happen on the browser. And the reason is because if we change this object, all of a sudden we lose reactivity. The only way to maintain reactivity while using reactive is to only be changing the properties within the object of that reactive variable. Let me say that again. We can't change the whole entire variable, the whole entire object, or we lose reactivity. We can only change properties within that um, object. So for example, if I said employee.name is equal to Bobby, when I hit employee, you're gonna see, we change it to Bobby, so the name changes. But we want to change all of these values to, the, to all of these values. I'm gonna show you the cleanest way to change this object. 
and we're going to use some built-in functions built into JavaScript for objects specifically. We're going to say object.assign, and then we're going to say that we want to change employee, the reactive variable, to all the properties existing in employees one. So when we click this, all of these values right here will be then be re replaced by Bob's values. So let's go ahead and click change employee. And we notice everything has changed to exactly what we want. It all matches up with Bob's values. Now we have to do something very specific just to show you exactly what is going on here because you might mistake it for replacing the object, right? Like I have this object right here. I click this button and all of a sudden I'm showing this object right here, but I'm not replacing the object. What I am replacing is the property values within that object. And just to make that very explicit, we're going to get rid of one position. Actually, we'll just get rid of the department as well. We're only gonna have his salary, and we're not gonna have the department or the position. And just take note that in Sheila's object, she's in, mar she's in marketing, that's her department, and she is a social media manager. All right, so let's go ahead. So we have all the Sheila information being displayed right here. Let's go ahead and click the change employee button. And what happens is it replaced all of these property values. It put Bob, his birthday, and his salary, but it didn't change the marketing department. It didn't change his position because he didn't have uh, those inside his object. So it just left it the way it is because there was nothing to replace it with, right? Because we're just replacing the values and there was no values to replace it with. And so it stayed exactly the same. So that's what's going on just to make it very explicit of what is happening inside that object.